Boom. All right. Well, welcome to week two, day two of the online youth Bible class. Uh, I'm very happy you guys are here coming to read God's word with me. So welcome. Um, if you are on YouTube or you're on Facebook and you want to be on the other one, uh, these are posted on both YouTube and Facebook. So they are on the Everyday Christian Fellowship version of, of both of those uh, platforms. So whatever you want to be on, um, they are on both. So my name is Lee, me and my wife, Brooke. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. <laughs> we are the youth directors here at Everyday. And um, we just want to let you know we appreciate you being here. And, and we are praying that you are still healthy, you're still happy, and that you guys are still able to learn and, and to have fun and still exercise at the house. Uh, I got some, some people in my college class that are like, man, I'm going crazy. <laughs> so uh, so I, I know how it is. And we are, we are praying that you guys are, are doing well. And we miss you. We cannot wait until we're together again. But uh, until then, we will continue to do Even these. You are. <laughs> uh, we will continue to do these. So today, uh, we are on, uh, we're, we're going to be in James again. James 1, verse 13. So, if you want to turn there, you can go ahead and pause it, but I'm going to read it. Uh, James 1, verse 13 says, When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So, uh, real quick, this is playing off of, uh, of something at the, the beginning of the chapter in, uh, in verse 2. Right? I'm going to summarize it real quick. It says, verse 2 says, Consider it uh, nothing but joy uh, when you fall into various trials. Right? When you have trials in your life, consider it joy. Be assured that the testing of your faith because right, that's what the, these trials now in our lives are. They are testings of our faith. Uh, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance and that leads to spiritual maturity and inner peace. So what does that mean? Uh, this means that God will test us. Right? There will be tests in our life. There will be trials and those are tests for us. There will be trials in our life, whatever it is, whatever you're, you're going through that, that is a trial for you. Um, it is a test of your faith, a test of your belief and your trust in the Lord. But it says that when we go through these, we should consider it joy. Uh, because when we go through these trials and these tests of our faith, um, we gain experience. Right? These are now an experience that I can go to somebody and say, hey, I went through this. Or, or, or this is what happened to me, right? It's an experience that you can share now. And, um, and we gain experience and we gain strength or endurance, right? A runner runs and they run more and faster and, and more and more and more so that they get the endurance or the strength to, to run even more. <laughs> so um, we gain strength and endurance from these trials and these tests of our faith. Um, and from that, from all of that, from the trials and the, uh, and the testing of your faith, we get strength and we get spiritual maturity, right? Because um, it's a test of our faith, right? This is a spiritual battle, right? We don't battle of flesh and blood, but we battle of spiritual principalities. So um, we gain spiritual maturity when we go through these experiences and uh, we gain peace, inner peace, right? Now, uh, uh, we, we get to start to realize, man, God really is taking care of us and he's really equipping us uh, to get through these things. Now, I, I went over verse two with you uh, because he said here, when uh, I'll read verse 13 one more time. It says, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. All right. So we saw in verse two, God tests people, but um, but God does not tempt people. Right. Um, we are not tempted by God because God cannot be tempted by evil, right? The essence of God is, is holiness and, and good, right? No one can lay their eyes on God because he is, uh, he is so holy that you would surely die from looking at him. So, uh, so, so because of that, God can't even be around evil, let alone be tempted by evil. So he does not tempt anyone. Now, verse 14 says, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed, right? Um, we are tempted, right? I, whether you're saved or you're not saved, you are tempted all the time, right? So it says we are tempted, but we're tempted when we are dragged away, right? I love that phrase. It's, it's scary, right? When we are dragged away, right? Probably from, from the, the stronghold that we have in God, 
right? But we are tempted when we are dragged away or we're enticed or we're baited. When we are, when we are dragged away or baited to commit sin, right? By our own, this happens because or by our own worldly desire, right? Our own lust or our own passion, right? Our own worldly desire drags us away from our stronghold in God and when we are tempted. So, uh, verse 15 says, Then, um, yeah, it says, Then after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. Right? So when, when temptation and desire, right? And when our desire and temptation conceive, when they mate, what they birth is sin. Sin comes from that. And when sin is done, uh, doing whatever it's going to do, when sin is fully grown, um, it, it, it gives birth to death. All right, you see, it's a, it's the, you get worse and worse. You start off with desire and you end with death. Right? Um, and and the, the death he's talking about is, is spiritual death. Right? When I am in sin, it's hard to go talk to, to my father about anything. Right? I feel ashamed. Right, or, or maybe an emotional death. Right, There's a lot of sins that make us feel guilty. Um, there are sins that just make us feel emotional, Right, feel bad or, or, or mad at ourselves or mad at, at whatever. Or maybe even physical death. Right, Killing somebody is a sin, but there are also sins that straight up will just lead to somebody physically dying. But, uh, but, but the real death here is spiritual death right? or, or uh, separation from God. Right, God sent Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. So if we sin, it, it is, God has already made a way for us. It doesn't matter if we, if we, right? It, it doesn't um, dependent on the fact that we don't sin. But when we sin, that still causes a separation between us and God. Like I said, it's hard for me to go talk to God uh, when I am sinning. Right when I'm living uh, apart from the way that that I want to live, or apart from the way that He wants me to live, that'll still cause some some separation in our relationship. Right, I got a relationship with my wife, and, and if I do something that um that is against what what she wants me to do, and really what I what we've uh, committed to do, uh, that causes a separation between us. Right, it doesn't mean we're not going to talk anymore. It just means it's a there's a little separation now. We might be a little. A little angsty against each other. So um, the real death is separation from God. So um, I want to maybe the most known um, instance in the Bible. I don't, I don't know if it is, but the one that I, I hear the most is uh, is Adam and Eve, right? So we're going to be in Genesis 3. We're going to read verse 6. If you want to turn there, Genesis 3, Genesis 3, verse 6. It says, when the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom. She took some and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate it. Right. So we know that uh, the snake, the devil, um, he helped tempt Eve by telling her that that um, that the, the fruit will give you the wisdom of, or the knowledge of good and evil. Right. So he helped tempt her or tempt her. Tempt. Can I say the word? Uh, yeah, I, I was right. Tempt. I just okay. I just said temp like temperature. You got the coronavirus. Um, I said he, he helped tempt her um, by by telling her how good it would be. But in the end, she was tempted by her. It says right after uh, pleasing to the eye. It says she was tempted by her uh, her own desire. Right. It says also desirable for gaining wisdom. So in the end, she was tempted by her desire, and from that came the sin. Of eating the fruit so so we saw uh, in, in James uh, what temptation is how it works and here we see an example of it right from her desire right it was also desirable for gaining wisdom from her desire um, came the sin of eating the fruit now I just want to end on uh, uh, what the Bible says uh, about how God takes care of us in our temptation so it's first Corinthians 10 Verse 13, if you want to turn there, it says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. Mm, sorry. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. 
But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way so that you can endure it. So it starts off by saying your temptation isn't something that nobody else has ever experienced, right? Uh, a lot of times we like to feel like we're the only one that's gone through this. We're the only one with this problem. But it says uh, your temptation isn't something that, uh, that or your temptation is something that is common to mankind, right? Your temptation is something that other people have gone through and are going through right now. So you are not alone in that. And then it says, God will not let you be tempted uh, beyond more than what you can bear, right? You will be able to, to live through it, or, or he will not give you more than, than what you can't live through, right? It might be more than what you can sustain, right? It might cause, a, it might be so much temptation that it'll cause you to, to, to uh, or, or let me give my experience, right? I was tempted so much um, that I, I ended up in a bad place. And in that bad place is where God or, or where somebody came and shared the gospel with me. And um, that is how I came saved, right? So I was able to bear it, uh, but I wasn't able to sustain that, that temptation. So uh, God, but it says God will not uh, let you be tempted beyond more than what you can bear, right? We can know that God, we're, he's not going to let us be tempted by more than what, uh, what, what we can stand or what we can get through. And then it finishes with saying, he has provided a way so that you can endure it, right? He has given a way so that you can get through it, whether that be uh, leaders to help lead you through it or, or friends and people to help uh, hold you accountable and, and to hold you up getting through it. Or maybe it's a, it's a really close relationship with him so that he can speak into your life as you're trying to get through it. So going through that, we went through what temptation is in James. We saw an example of it in Genesis and here in Corinthians, we see uh, what the Bible says about how God helps us through it. So I hope, my hope is that you know that you are not alone in your temptation, right? Other people have gone through this and, and probably are going through this, right? A lot of times we, uh, we, we come to church and we're like, I know we ain't coming to church right now, but we come to church and we're like, I am the only person here with problems, right? Everybody else looks perfect, right? They're all happy and hugging people and, and it seems like nothing's going wrong. I, I got to be the only person that's not perfect. And I hope this shows you that, that you are not the only one. You are not alone in your temptation, right? You are, there's nothing going on to you that, hasn't, that isn't common to mankind. Um, but it says that God is faithful. Right? And God is faithful, uh, that God has, maybe he's put lead, or I know he has put leaders in your life that are here for you, um, that want to help you and that want to lead you and, and that want to be there for you. And he's given you a family, right? Uh, uh, the, the family, the church, uh, we are here, we are all here uh, for a reason. So the challenge today is um, to truly identify what your biggest temptation is, right? Maybe it's just a desire at this point, but truly identify your biggest temptation. Sorry, and confess it to God, right? That is, that is the first step usually is confessing it to God. And maybe if you, if you feel it on your heart, this isn't mandatory, but if you feel it on your heart, uh, confess it to somebody who you can trust, right? We are brothers and sisters in Christ and we can hold each other accountable, right? We can help each other get through things. So, so that's the challenge for today. Identify uh, your biggest temptation. Maybe it's just a desire right now. Um, confess it to God. Uh, pray about it. And maybe even confess it to somebody that you can trust, uh, that can hold you accountable, that can help you through this. Right? Somebody might have gone through the same thing. Uh, uh, you know, the... Sorry. Uh, the devil wants to make you feel alone. So if you feel like, uh, like there's somebody you can trust that you need to talk to... Um, I don't want you to feel alone in this. And, and me and Brooke and your leaders are here for you if you ever want yes. to talk about anything. We are impartial. Um, we are here to help you. And in the end, I want you to remember that uh, Jesus died for our sins, right? God sent Jesus to die on the cross to make a way for uh, us to be with God in spite of our sins. So don't let it hold you down if you are stuck in a temptation, right? Let it be something that, uh, that, that we can get through, that, that God will provide a way so that you can endure. So um, I'm praying that this is encouraging to you and that, and that hopefully this frees, or that this, but God will free some of you from some temptations. And again, I am here, Brooke is here. If you want to talk about anything, please let us know. So we can pray and, and we can get going. So Lord, I thank you for today. 
I thank you for these students. I thank you for this church and this family that you have provided for us, Lord. I, I pray that whatever temptations are going on in anybody's life, Lord, that they would know it now. Now that they know what temptation is and how to identify it, Lord, that they would identify it and it would no longer have the, uh, the ability to sneak up on them. I pray that they would be uh, 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 truthful with themselves and with you and that they would be able to, uh, to endure, Lord, because you will, you will provide a way for us to endure. So I pray that these students are healthy, that they're safe, and, and that they're still having fun, Lord. I thank you so much for them, uh, Lord. We praise you. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, tune in tomorrow. We're going to try to get these uploaded by five every day, but uploading is not the easiest thing. We get them done early, but uploading's crazy. So <laughs> we love you guys. We will see you tomorrow. Um, anything to say? Uh, bye. Love you. <laughs> All right. Bye.